Hey, listen, if you're not getting a lot done, it's because you're trying to get a lot done. Yes, it sounds counterintuitive, right? Well, it is, to be quite honest. I think we all have these aspects of our life of, of us trying to do a lot and all these things want to get done, but you actually get overstimulated. And when you get overstimulated, it starts to ruin your life without you even knowing it. So you have to find a way we're going to talk about today, the three points to actually kind of uncover where it's going on and how to really structure it differently. Because as I lay these out, it's going to show you how to not only kind of go away from overstimulation and really see how it's ruining your life, but also how to cope, overcome each of the three steps I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to outline, here's three steps, things you can see that are actually going to be issues you're running into where overstimulation is ruining your life, but also here are three steps and three ways to overcome these things. And this is something that I know I had to deal with. I've seen honestly a ton of people who are completely full of potential go into life and fall miles short of their potential of success. I mean, miles short, you know these people, you know people that they could be doing great things and then they really just fall short sheerly because of the fact that they are overstimulating themselves. They're doing way too much and they don't get a chance to get to the point where like they can shift and do something more powerful. And I'm a big guy that has to do with this identity stuff and this mentality stuff but the biggest thing is like they they will not go in there because they won't own their own mind they, they have their whole entire mind cluttered with stuff maybe you're one of these people where you go anthony is speaking to me right now and if i am that's the point of this whole video but the idea is if you can find out how to step into your life look at all the things you're doing clarify these three things we're going to talk about unpack where you might be overstimulated and really falling miles short of your potential and go and say hey i'm going to stop cluttering my mind and I'm gonna get to the point where I own my own mind and stop getting all the stuff in there, you'll find that the things that do remain when things have been removed, allow you to get them done faster. You're not as stimulated or overstimulated and now you can get so much more success in life. And so that's really our idea because we all have what I call a shiny object syndrome. That's it. We, there's so many things you could do, right? You can watch this, create this, read this, build this, do this, make this. And with that whole process, we get to this point of having so much overstimulation sheerly from shiny objects. I mean, millions of people have this issue because they simply, they don't stop and focus on what's necessary. Because honestly, when you look at anything going on in life, any journey that's going to be worthwhile, that you're probably going down in the first place, you have to focus, period. You have to be able to stay in the pocket for a long period of time and go that journey and that distance. And if you can't do that, you're going to to fall short. I know for me, there's times when I wanted to get in better shape or I wanted to build a better business or I want to fix something in my relationships, right? And you go down that journey, you find that if you're bouncing around and doing different stuff and not focused on that, well, that thing falls apart. You don't get the outcome that you're aspiring to because, well, you weren't staying in the pocket. You weren't consistent about things. And that's the biggest key to stop chasing shiny objects and go, all right, that could be dumb. You know what? While I see it twinkling, I'm not going to touch it because it'll deter me and detract me from the thing I'm focused on right now. I want to stay in the pocket for. So we're always look at these areas. Now, these three points I'm going to break down, pay attention to them. I recommend getting a pen and paper if you want to, but I promise when you understand these, it's going to be a game changer for how you operate. The first step is you need to go small, not big. What I mean by this, well, every single year when I get to the new year, and it's any time, people go, Anthony, man, you going to go big this next year? I go, nah, man, I'm not going big. I'm going small in a big way. What does that mean, right? Well, what I mean by that is I'm not going to go out and shoot for the moon. Everybody wants to go big, they want to shoot for the moon, and I'm going to go do this, and I'm going go do this and what happens is they typically run out of gas halfway there what would happen to a true rocket ship if on the way to the moon all of a sudden ran out of gas it falls and floats around in space and we feel like that we feel floaty we feel like we're all over the place and what ends up happening is they feel like crap because i failed at this thing i didn't get it done and now i'm just met with this reality of like i i'm not the person to do it and i start looking and checking myself and questioning my progress because i, I don't know why i'm stuck here and so the idea is you got to really take a look and see, well, what well, is the big vision the key? Well, should I have gone for the big vision? Because while I have a big vision for big things, if I meet none of those, I feel horrible. But on the other hand, people who actually find ways to succeed, what should be done is to actually focus on going small in a big way. What that looks like is I step in and I go, look, I'm going to choose two or three things, not 10 different projects, not some humongous, massive thing, right? I'm going to go with one simple thing that I know if I can do it for a long period of time, it's going to change the game. It'll be something that allows me to, to really get clarity on, on who I am and what I do. So here's an example. I wanted to create some, some discipline and consistency and a skill set around this right here, speaking. Now, you may not know this, I have no script. I have ideas and I have bullet points and I kind of talk and flow, but I couldn't do this before. This was not a skill set of mine. I couldn't hop on stage. I couldn't talk without stumbling over words or hoping I could catch a thought when I needed to. It's like, how do I learn to be able to be, you know, a person that could speak what's called extemporaneously, off the cuff and flow. And I, I realized, well, I just gotta do it. There was no other solution. I could try to go big and get on big stages and shoot to book big bookings and or get the big videos out. And I go, but that's, 
that's one whiz bang, simple, you know, flash in a pan thing. It's not gonna solve the problem. But if I did it every day, if I just did it every single day, could I get better? Well, yeah, well, how am I gonna do it? Am I gonna film 20 minute videos, 30 minute videos every day? No, no, no. What's a human being's typical attention span in the time of social media? At the time when I was doing this, it was about 90 seconds. I go, all right, if 90 seconds is a good window of time, because you know if somebody gives you a phone they, and they, they're playing a video, the first thing you do is you touch the video, the screen, to see how much time's on that video. I wanna know how much you're expecting me to lock in right now, right? So I go, okay, 90 seconds, that might be the window of time I can work with, okay, cool. And what I would then do is I would go, let me step back and I go, all right, how can I create something every day towards this? And I promised myself I would do what's called a nightly 90. For seven days a week, I would record a video, 90 seconds on any topic I could find in the room. I could do it right now if I needed to. Any topic in the room, I would just spit something off real quick, record it, that'd be the, the thing. It'd be a life message based on whatever topic of whatever I saw in the room was. Or I'd tell somebody, hey, give me an idea, and I would just rip and do it. And I did this. At first, it was gonna be like for a month, all right, a month. Then it was gonna be for like, okay, I'll do two months, you know. No, I'll do three years. Yeah, I said that right, three years. Right, It went from a month to two months to three months and I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing it. I ended up doing it for 3.65 years, 1,333 straight days. It's crazy, like it was a long, long time. Seriously, almost four years, like over three and a half years, every single night I did this because my goal wasn't to go big, but to go small in a big way. And when I focused on that, it allowed me to get to the point where I got more notoriety, I got more more connections from people. People saw me as a clear, thoughtful speaker. I went from being a guy that people were like, why are you recording 90 second videos talking about stuff? What do you have to talk about to, can you please come share to our audience? We have about a thousand, two thousand people here. That's what it was. It wasn't, that was the big, right? It came to be big, but I just cause I went small in a big way. And when you look at the overstimulations because you're doing so many things, it's ruining your ability to actually refine your skill set. It's ruining your life overall because you're, you're, you're missing opportunities. You're not even seeing your potential be fulfilled because you're doing so much, trying to go big. So go small, find something simple, something small. And then at that point, I want you to go, okay, great. How can I do it in a big way? How can I be disciplined, consistent? Can I do it for a longer period of time than most would actually uh, commit to? And the reason is because there's pain in longevity. No matter what, if you go some for the long haul, you will find a moment in time where it is painful, it is difficult, it is hard to stay the course because life challenges you. Something changes, someone comes into your life. Life. Someone comes out of your life. Something goes wrong that wasn't planned, but you find a way to stay consistent. It's in those windows you actually find the most growth for you as a human. And then from there, you can accomplish anything because you can apply that to anything from that point. Now, point number two, brain drain is real. Yes, if you talk about overstimulation, having a brain drain like that, that will kill you. Seriously, like it'll just, it, not that it'll actually genuinely kill you, but it is hard. Like most people assume that if I put eight hours on my schedule, that magically that eight hours is gonna be accomplished, right? So what I do is if I wanna be, you know, less stimulated, I go, okay, I gotta get all these projects done. I got eight hours tomorrow. I'm gonna do eight hours and I write it down on the document. I get it on my counter, it's in my planner. And what I do is I show up to the day and I get moving and I realize that about midway through the day, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm tired. I don't got anything. I, I, I'm trying, but I can't finish it off. And what you do is you have all these things that are now incomplete, unfinished. And what do you feel like? A loser? You feel like you suck? And it actually beats you up inside, so you have less positive energy, less confidence, so you don't show up in your life in a powerful way, so it ruins your life slowly. But if you could go in and go, look, brain drain's real, which means my brain is like a gas tank, and I can actually deplete the brain. I can have what's called decision fatigue. And what that is, I've made too many choices, done too much work, my brain's processing ability diminishes. So what I recommend doing is Ellie stepping back and going, okay, if I got this and I look at like a mental energy tank, if I overschedule myself completely and I keep draining my fuel every day, I'm gonna get to the point where I have nothing left and I feel like a failure because I'm actually failing at the schedule I committed to. Okay, cool, what's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite is I step back and go, all right, I need to give myself the best opportunity to one, accomplish tasks, and two, feel good about myself because I did. Simple fix here is to go, all right, brain's in a drain. I'm gonna chop half the stuff I have in my calendar off and move it to a different day. I'm gonna realize that I might get four solid dialed hours of work. I'm gonna work for four solid dialed hours. Now, what you can do is what you had in the eight hours, you can get more efficient in time and move that into the four hours, different conversation, 
but you can do that. So what you think may take you eight hours might only take you four. Then that four hours is a good, solid, productive four hours. Now you get stuff done. Now I get to the end of it and I go, look, my brain in the back end, it felt drained, but hey, I feel good. I don't feel like I lost something. I don't feel like I, I left something on the table. I don't feel like a loser because I failed to commit or finish what I committed to. Like, I feel good. I got these things done. And now you actually start to have more positive momentum. But you've got to step back and, and realize that you can't operate in the way this works. There's actually a study done by Inc. Magazine on this. Quite literally, you could look it up. What they found was that in an eight hour day, people on average had two hours and 53 minutes of actual focused work. So while I'm saying three or four hours, I'm being honest about three or four hours. Eight hour day, maybe three hours of focused work. So what happens to the rest of the hours? They think they're getting stuff done. They're scrolling, they're going to the bathroom, having lunch, they're hanging out, they're not doing work. And now if you apply that to how we work as humans, maybe in an area where you need to be focused, you're gonna feel like a loser because you're only getting three hours and you can't do much more. So you've gotta be paying attention to actually the brain what the brain does. And you might be asking yourself, well, Anthony, but but I got a limited tank. I, I can't do much. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a statement I love. It says the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. You might have a limited tank. You might not be able to do more than an hour. Cool. Improve it. Stay an extra 15. Fight for 15 minutes of focus. Then give me 30. Then, then give me 45 minutes. Then give me an hour. Then give me two hours, right? You build. You build. It's like a muscle. You got to work it like a muscle slowly but surely. Over time, you can do vastly more than you used to be able to do. That's how all of us have already naturally done it. We just did it off of sheer survival, not typically intentionally be a better human. When you can do that, we're going to be good. Now, the third one, this is a kind of an issue that we all run into. The reason why you get overstimulated is you're a slave to your device. That's it. You're a slave to it. You're in it right now, possibly on your phone right now watching me. Right. This thing that you're watching, it's good you're watching this video. I'll give you that much. But there's a lot more on this whole wide world of internets you could be watching right now. But you're watching this. Great, right? But what happens is we get to the point where our apps are truly designed to steal our attention. So now you get overstimulated by devices and entertainment and videos and this going on and this ping and this. I mean, the, honestly, the things going off all the stinking time. I have to put my whole phone system on do not disturb to record this for you without myself getting a bunch of alerts and pings. So they're designed this way. There literally are people designed to go, how can I get you to stay on the device as long as possible so you can veg out, be unproductive, and then not fulfill your dream? Now, is the goal for you not to fulfill your dream for them? No, but the goal is to get you to be on the device all day long. But in doing so, you can't be productive so you don't fulfill on your dreams. So you end up being a person that sits back and goes, man, great videos, but I got nothing done. So you have to start creating excuses for yourself as to why you missed that thing. And it eats you alive. You start feeling bad about yourself because you start looking at the proof of what your life is. And you go, I haven't accomplished anything I chose. I said I was gonna do this and I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten this thing done. Well, if you can choose to put a device down, a simple thing, it's a simple starting point, you'll find that you can get more focused, get more productive, you get more done. That's just a big thing and you can actually spend Spend more time filling your life with meaningful activities, things that truly do help you achieve your goals and get more done in a fast time period. And then the thing is, the, the same attachment you have, like a dopamine dump from watching a video or seeing something, you actually start getting that from accomplishing tasks. So really what the device is doing for us, it's helping us get that dump. We want that, that, that scroll, the laugh, the like, we want that. Well, what if you got that from somebody saying, hey, I love this thing you created. Hey, that you did a great job with this project. Or you yourself looking in the mirror going, hey, way to, way to go getting that workout done. Way to avoid eating that candy bar and get that healthy meal for lunch. Right? You can do it for yourself. When you do it for yourself, it's a different attachment to ha happiness and joy and success. So you got to start looking at where can I stop being a slave to my device? For me, I did this and I realized that the whole process was also set up around when I'm not a slave to my device, I can set and keep boundaries. I can have a boundary that says no phone, only this thing right now, only this project right now, only this time with my family right now, only this time in the gym right now. At one point, I wanted to write a book and I realized that if I was being a slave to my device, I would not be able to get it done. So I would turn it off and I'd put it in a different space. I put headphones in and listen to like I had a little MP3 player and I would just listen to this MP3 player and I would do my thing and no connection to the outside world. Boundary set. And lo and behold, I wrote a book at the fastest pace my publisher said he'd ever had a public an author write a book because I just tucked away and I would do things in a diligent manner, dialed in and focused. Am I superhuman? No, I'm human. Just 
just like you. But my focus was super. My attention to detail was super. And in doing so, I created something amazing that came out in time. And you might be thinking to yourself, so what, I just put the phone down, I changed my life? Well, yes and no, to be honest. You put the phone down, yes, it will clear up the aspects of you being overstimulated and having way too much on your plate and a lot of things being in, put in your brain and you just get hitting scatterbrain. Yes, it'll help you to stop that. But you must also have an area where once you have that time clear, you give yourself a strategic approach of what to do. So yeah, put the phone down, give yourself time. And before you even get started on a task, sit down and plot out what tasks you should approach. How long will they take? What are you actually going to do in those tasks? When you can set a clear idea, it gives you space to actually move in the right direction. Other than that, what happens is you get overstimulated all day long from people reaching out, texting you, things popping up, the TV show has to come into play. You don't realize your brain is getting drained, so you actually have this overstimulation. You're beating yourself up for not following through with the promise you made to yourself surely because you promised too much. But all these things come into play, or you choose to go big. I'm gonna go big, I'm gonna go big. And every time you fail, you feel like a failure, when really you just needed to go small. See, it all ties together, but this overstimulation is something that not many people are paying attention to. And if you can actually step back and go, all right, I am maybe overstimulated a little bit. I need to kind of calm things down and slow my slow my roll, we'll call it. And if you can focus on those areas, really focusing on stepping in and going, hey, as a look at my life and what I got going on, am I going too big? Do I need to go small in a big way? Am I having this thing where my brain is being drained because I'm, I'm just focusing on the wrong stuff or I'm doing too much and giving myself too much overstimulation of tasks or my sight of my device? Do I need to put that thing down and focus on clearing my mind to clear my path and then taking actions towards that path? You do that, it'll be a game changer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you get a chance to go and watch this video up here. Uh, I believe if you like this one, you'll love this one right here. Mostly because I, I unpacked a couple things from conversation with other people and doing some, some digging into some souls of what people are battling. And so this video right here will kind of uncover some things. So take a look at it. You'll enjoy it. Outside of that, make sure you do the dark work to make shift happen.